Hello and welcome to another edition of Siena Saints Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Champagne. In just a moment, we'll be joined by Kristen Lang from Siena Swimming and Diving. But first, let's take a look at the week that was in Siena Athletics. Men's basketball dropped their second game in a row against Loyola Thursday night, falling 66-55 in Baltimore. The Saints led 47-40 before the Greyhounds went on a 15-0 run, turning the seven-point deficit into an eight-point lead. Here's Siena head coach Mitch Bonaguro after the game. That, you know, we had the game right where we wanted, but this, this was a seven-point lead. And I tried to stop it with a couple of timeouts, but um, we, we just, they, they sped us up. I think they started to speed us up, and we were starting to make plays out of character. And, um, you know, they, they, they got the run. I mean, it, it, it was a game that we had in control. Siena opens a two-game homestand Monday night against Iona at 7 o'clock at the Times Union Center. The Saints will also be home Friday night, taking on I-87 rival Marist in the second half of a doubleheader with the Siena women. Also of note, at halftime, the ever-popular dance clinic will be on display, and also the Siena men's lacrosse team will be getting their MAC championship rings. Meanwhile, women's basketball split two games this weekend. The Saints dropped the annual pink zone game against Fairfield, but bounced back with a 67-56 win at Ryder. Siena is now in a three-way tie for fifth in the conference, heading into this weekend's homestand. Siena plays St. Peter's Friday at 5 p.m. at the Times Union Center before hosting Marist on Sunday afternoon at the Arc in the annual Gold Rush and Dance Clinic game. And Siena Swimming and Diving completes the 2011-2012 regular season this weekend, hosting St. Francis at the Siena Swim Center. Joining me now is senior Kristen Lang. Kristen, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. You're a senior, and this is your last dual meet as a member of the Siena Saints. What's going through your mind heading into Saturday? Um, it's definitely bittersweet. Um, it's a really big commitment. Four years of being a student athlete takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So I'm definitely tired, but I'm going to miss those girls. And we have a really good team this year. So just meeting all the people that I did at Siena, they're some of my best friends. And I know that I'll be talking to them for the rest of my life. With a win on Saturday, you and the other two seniors in your class would become the winningest class in program history. What does that mean to you? Um, it's a really big accomplishment. We've had some really good teams over the year, and it just shows how we've progressed as seniors. Coming in our freshman year, we really didn't know what to expect or how to really race with those girls. We didn't know the competition, so it'd be really great, and it'd be something to remember forever. You mentioned you came in, and you've been a part of some really good teams here at Siena. What's it been like bringing the Siena Swimming and Diving program to another level? It's been great. Our freshman year, we did really well, but we've just been going up and up every single year. It was tough having a coach change, but Paul came in, he did what he needed to do. He recruited really well, and we've been a very strong team ever since I've been here. I understand that earlier this month over winter break, you guys actually went to Florida for some winter break training. How was that? It was great. It was a really good experience. It was nice to be in the warm weather. So it's just a different environment. Instead of going back to the Siena pool, I think we all did really well working in the sun, being together, and it's a bonding experience for us too. What was your favorite part of the trip if you had to pick just one? I would say us going to get frozen yogurt every single night. It was the only thing that really got us through the practices. We're all <laughs> ready for frozen yogurt after the doubles, so we all went there as a team pretty much every night. Easy to please, huh? Yeah. <laughs> what are your goals for the rest of the season? Um, I'd say I would hopefully want to get third at max. It's a really big accomplishment that we had my sophomore year, and we stepped down one place last year, so that'd be great. And just for the team to have fun, at this point, I only have three weeks left, and it's really just about the girls and coming together as a team, regardless of what place we get. Lightning round time, Kristen. Here we go. Your favorite movie? Cool Runnings. Sorry about the Jamaican bobsled team. Definitely my favorite. Favorite TV show? Uh, I'd have to say Gossip Girl. The funniest member of the team? It's a toss-up between Stephanie Bundes and Kristen Cherry. What are the funniest things that they've done to try to loosen the team up a little bit? They just always know how to make us laugh, no matter how miserable we are during a practice, a set, or if a meet's not going the way we want it to. They just, they always know those one-liners to say to get everyone going. Your biggest pet peeve? When people chew gum with their mouth open. Ugh. It's the Chewing worst. like a cow. Yeah. It's not, not a good thing. I hate it. Finally, last question. If you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be? Natalie Coughlin, Sandra Bullock, and Mark Twain. Pretty powerful table right there. Yeah. Well, Kristen, thanks very much for your time and best of luck this weekend. Thank you. Again, Kristen and the Saints will be in action on Saturday afternoon at the Siena Swim Center against St. Francis at 1 p.m. A pre-meet ceremony will be held to honor the program's class of 2012, which will become the winningest class in program history with a win. That'll wrap things up for this edition of Siena Saints Weekly. I'm Andrew Champagne, and I'll see you next week.